Hi, I'm Devin Dean, Content Director here at ProjectManager.com. Hi, welcome to today's whiteboard session. In a departure from tradition, I'm not going to talk about project management topics. Instead, I'm going to go over a couple of process improvement methodologies that have been out in the marketplace for about 50 or 60 years in an effort to maybe just highlight some of the key points from each of those methods that you might want to take on as your own when you're looking to improve your processes on your projects. If nothing else, it'll help you score better the next time you play boardroom, boardroom bingo. So the two processes that I'm going to talk about are Kaizen, or improvement is good, so change good, which is the katakana here for, um, for uh, Kaizen, and Six Sigma which is about eliminating defects. And in this case, Six Sigma refers to about 3.4 defects per million products that you're getting out there. And that's where the Six Sigma comes from. Now, these methodologies have been out there for about 50, 60 years. Um, Kaizen came about in post-World post War II. So this is after the uh, World War II is over, America sent a number of consultants, business consultants, over to Japan to help them rebuild their economy and get the industry and industrial and manufacturing base up and running again. Out of that era came um, popular improvement methods like TQM, or Total Quality Management, and also Kaizen. Kaizen was born in that era. Uh, Six Sigma came in the mid-80s. So Specifically, 1986 is when it first formally surfaced, but in the mid-70s, it was starting to be beaten about by a company called Motorola in the United States. They manufactured quite a lot of communications equipment. They found their quality control was dropping off, products were getting worse and worse, and their profitability as a result was decreasing. So the CEO at the time decided he wanted to do something about it, so they started, doing, started looking at ways they could improve their processes and manufacturing at Motorola. The methodology was finally encapsulated and packaged, if you will, in 1986, and since then they've been using it as well as uh, the, probably uh, the top 500, Fortune 500 companies are, have adopted that methodology for improving their product and their quality control. The philosophies differ slightly. Um, for Kaizen, the philosophy is more about um, humanizing the workforce. So in this way, your workforce is empowered. Everybody from the CEO down to the janitorial staff have a part in improving the processes of that company to help it work more effectively, more efficiently, and certainly safer. For Six Sigma, it's more of a command and control approach. Six Sigma is your traditional um, uh, consulting engagement where, where people will go in, look at the size of the problem, do their gap analysis, and figure out what to do and how to solve that in a more project-by-project uh, project approach. Kaizen is about uh, a culture change. Um, Six Sigma is more about solving particular problems. Okay? So there's a slight difference, difference there. How they achieve this is quite similar. Um, in this case, for Kaizen, they achieve this by having executive leadership all the way down to, as I said before, the janitor staff um, being part of that process, partaking in the improvement process. In Six Sigma, certainly you have to have that executive mandate as well. So the executives um, and the senior management team are adopting and embracing a change for the better, for improving quality, improving processes, and ensuring each of the team members in their company actually has a part in that as well. The difference is that in Kaizen, it's, it, like I said, it's part of that culture. It's how we do things at X company. Whereas in Six Sigma, there are initiatives. There are Six Sigma initiatives where they're actually looking to drive improvement but again, every team member has got that participation and that responsibility, but in primarily in Six Sigma, you're looking at it more of a project-by-project project basis. Now, how they do this. So Kaizen's, the key process in Kaizen is based on Deming's um, key process of PDAC, and what that stands for is Plan, Do, Analyze, and Change. And the idea is that PDAC is actually a bit of a cycle, right? So it's a repeatable and an iterative cycle where you are doing your plan doing, analyzing, changing, then um, do that once for a particular um, problem that you're having, and then you go on and you do it again. Small incremental changes um, make improvement in the long term. So this is a Kaizen company, is one that embraces that change but knows it's a journey, knows they're not gonna get there in the first step, and recognizes that the best way to do that is small incremental improvements at the, pro at the team level, at the business unit level, if you will. 
in Six Sigma, how they achieve the result and their processes, they've got uh, loads of processes, but in, first off, it is a statistical based, I'll get my spell checker on, it's a statistical based uh, improvement process. So in this one, it's very important for them to be able to define and measure the output that they're looking to achieve and then to find specific ways at addressing that. Um, and these are not, we're not talking small incremental changes, we're usually talking big bold changes to improve those processes. So there's two primary, uh, um, two primary processes that are used in Six Sigma. The first one we call um, D, D -MAEC, and that stands for Define, Measure, Analyze, Improve, and Control. The other process is uh, similar to that. It's uh, DIMA, DIMA div, um, define, measure, analyze, design, and then verify. So um, in these two processes, they are similar. Um, and what they're talking about, like I said before, it's, it's, it's more of an organized, if you will, a more of a project by project initiative where you're defining actually what the problems are, you're measuring um, what is that might be costing you or, or where the efficiency loss or that quality loss is occurring. Um, you analyze, again, where you can make those improvements. You make the improvements and then you control them. Or in this case, you uh, design the uh, new process that you need to follow and then you verify that that works. Some key features of each of these, the first one I want to say, and if you haven't gotten it by now, I'll write it up on the board again, it's really culture change here, right? Companies that embrace Kaizen um, do it holistically. It's the entire company. It's, it's how we do things. Uh, Toyota's done so, and there's a, you might have uh, read the book, or you find Google it on uh, Amazon, and um, you'll see a book called The Toyota Way. This is Toyota's approach toward Kaizen. It talks about the philosophy at Toyota. It talks about every team member's responsibility. Um, it is certainly a cultural sort of aspect. Um, you talk about companies that are Kaizen companies, you, we mentioned Toyota. Look, even where I work here um, in New Zealand, we've got a bank using Kaizen and they're using Kaizen to improve their close the books process, if you will, in the finance team. So it, it's not just manufacturing companies that can use this, it's all types of industry and, and the thing to remember, it is a cultural change, it's a cultural process. With Six Sigma, whilst it is cultural in terms of it's embracing the need for improvement of, qu of quality approaches and, and streamlining your workforce, the thing to remember that it is statistical based. Um, usually within a company, you've got designated champions of Six Sigma. You've got people in some cases who it's their full-time job to look for areas of improvement. Uh, these folks are called your black belts. They've gone through the Six Sigma training. They're familiar with the 100 or so different processes and 100 or so different ways to measure quality improvement. And they're out there running and leading those projects that are out there to improve quality um, in your manufacturing base or streamline your processes. You've also got green belts who might be, as an example, it might be a side responsibility for a department head to be a green belt in Six Sigma. So they've got a key part in the Six Sigma project. They're there at the operational level where the rubber meets the road to actually enact some of those improvement processes, but they're not driving that change. That's what the black belts are doing. You've got a series of other colored belts um, just comprising different Six Sigma project teams to try and improve that process as well. So they use the um, uh, champion approach where you've got a designated person who's there to deliver Six Sigma projects. So this in a nutshell is a, is a quick chart on distinguishing the different features between these quality improvement programs. I suggest that you yourself, if you're interested in learning more about them, and certainly I would take that up, um, Google it uh, on the internet or go to your local library and pick up a couple of books. Certainly each of these different quality processes can give you some ideas on your own when you're running your project teams on how to improve your efficiency or streamline uh, your workforce and also improve the quality products that you're producing from your projects. For more project management whiteboard sessions and all your project manager needs, come see us at projectmanager.com.